welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. So, uh, Rabisi Ramirez, two-time uh, Cuban Olympic gold medalist. He's made a little return after being shocked last year on a majority decision by Rafael Espinosa. Lost his WBO um, featherweight title. That was back in December, back in the last year, December. And he looked good coming back. He's 30 years old now, uh, this Cuban guy. And you've, you've seen him, I'm sure, if you're a boxing fan, you've seen Rabisi. Very, very skillful, but with a few sort of gaps in his fistic makeup, shall we say. Um, he's got a ton of talent. There's no doubt about that. He, anyway, he, he scored this, this knockout over Brandon Leon Benitez in the seventh round. And he looked brilliant at times, absolutely brilliant. But Brandon Benitez kind of fell into he fell into his own sort of trap, if you like, because his tactics just seemed to be totally lacking. He was he didn't seem to know what to do. Now he came in with a pretty decent record, you know, twenty one wins, two defeats. He held um, the NABO title, you know, North American title. Mexican guy, twenty six years old. Uh, but he only had nine wins in the uh, in the KO column, and his two defeats were by stoppage. But they were a while ago. The last one was to Sal Sanchez. That was back in 2019, um, and then he had a third round KO. I think a couple of years prior to that defeat. So he could be clipped and he could be hurt. But he was on a nice little winning run of seven, eight, six, seven, eight fights against lesser opposition. He had fought in the United States before. Um, he won a split decision over Kan Zhu, who's who was a pretty decent former world champ. Um, but against Ramirez, he must have known that he was in there against a guy whose skill level, whose natural talent and whose um, arsenal of weapons was greater than his own. But instead of... I mean, he had a choice. He could either... Um, fight defensively and go the distance and just cover up and not try to win. He could try to win, in which case he's, he's got to try and make a fight of it rather than a boxing match. And that would mean getting stuck in, throwing lots of punches, taking risks, um, swarming Ramir, um, Ramirez, trying to sort of outwork him, you know, push him back, get him out of his rhythm. But he didn't do any of that. You know, j jab with a jab, he didn't do that. He, he just... He, he stood off and he, he allowed Ramirez to find his timing, to find his rhythm, um, to I mean, the ring generalship of Ramirez, controlling the entire geography of the ring. It was all That was all down to Ramirez. Uh, Benitez kind of just followed R Ramirez around and, and waited almost to be hit or at least waited for Ramirez to throw punches and then maybe try to counter. There's no, he was never going to do that. He was never going to do that against Ramirez. Ramirez is too skillful. Plus the fact Ramirez is a southpaw. Um and once you allow Ramirez to find his groove, to find his rhythm, to just let start letting the punches flow, you're not going to beat him. You're not going to beat him. And I know that, that what Benitez had to do by rushing Ramirez or trying to outwork him or trying to make it a dirty fight, I know it's so much easier said than done, don't get me wrong, but he wasn't going to ever outbox Ramirez. And Ramirez was, is the harder hitter, apart from anything else, as he proved, because he knocked out Benitez in the seventh round. He... Um, Benitez had actually, or probably Ramirez, allowed Benitez to get him on the ropes and he countered with a huge um, left uppercut. Like I say, Ramirez is a southpaw. Um, and put Benitez over for the count. Uh, Benitez was still conscious, but he just couldn't get up within 10. Very good win for Ramirez, but... I mean, he's now 14 wins with nine KOs, two defeats, both on points. He lost his debut, as well as, well as the one to Espinosa. Um both on points, but he's in the first round, he, he was very cocky throughout the fight, Ramirez. He was often smiling at Benitez. But in the first round, I noticed he's still hanging his hands low and, you know, doing everything off reflexes. And, and he's got brilliant reflexes, no doubt. But there is a, kind of like with the Ramirez fight, uh, with the, uh, no, uh, with the Espinosa fight. He, he allowed kind of gave Espinosa a chance to come back into that fight because Espinosa was very heavily flawed. Um, he was flawed in, I think, the fifth and then he dropped Ramirez in the twelfth. Uh, but Ramirez has a, a tendency to allow um, 
opponents or to give opponents a chance to win, if you like. And I felt that he did that against Rafael Espinosa, taking nothing away from Espinosa, who's I think is still undefeated. But you shouldn't be you shouldn't be giving an opponent anything, you know, with your hands low and you know trying to be all cocky and all of this stuff. Now, Ramirez said that before the Espinosa fight, um, he had some personal issues, and yeah, okay, I, I buy all that. That can happen. Okay, it it can be a bad day at the office. And certainly this was a very, very good day at the office. The way he flattened Benitez was highlight real stuff. But Brandon Benitez isn't Rafael Espinosa. Um, and if Ramirez wants to get back into the featherweight, featherweight contention, there are some guys out there that he can't take liberties with. Um, and yes, he's very skillful. He's, he was firing some beautiful punches, you know, some beautiful combinations, body to head and both hands. But to be honest, Benitez was letting him do that. He wasn't making it difficult. At the very least, he, was, he wasn't making it competitive. Um, he wasn't making Ramirez think. Ramirez was just had carte blanche to do what he wanted to do. So uh, I just, uh, as much as I like Ramirez, I like his skills. I think he looks beautiful. I do get the, 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 the you know, beautiful when he gets those punches to throw in, uh, flow in and throw in. Uh, at the same time, um, he does strike me as being a bit of a front runner. I, and I don't think we've seen him when he's pushed back and when he's, when questions are asked of him, we haven't seen him fully answering those questions. And there are, there are featherweights out there, many of them who will give Rabisi Ramirez more problems than Brandon Leon Benitez did. So a good performance, but with slight, slight reservations. I don't want to sound like I'm slagging Ramirez off because I'm not. I just have a, a few reservations about his fortitude, his, his ability to fight, to fight and to think through problems that are, that are posed to him. When he lost to Rafael Espinosa, yeah, I mean, he won lots of rounds. That was a very, very close fight. It was a majority decision. But when Espinosa was turning the heat up, um, Ramirez was looking a little bit ragged. He was looking at anything but cocky. And of course, he got flawed in that final round as well. 12th round, which um, I can't remember the scores, but I don't know whether that, I think that might have, that might have got Espinosa the win. I don't know. I'll have to go back and look at the scores. Anyway, I'm digressing. Um, Rabisi Ramirez, what do you think of this fight? What do you think of his performance? Comments below. I'll give him a read and answer uh, as many as I can. And thank you as always for your time. Please subscribe to the channel. If you are new, it takes a second, cost you nothing. And also if you could hit the like button. If you, if you like the video. And if you didn't like the video, hit it anyway, because it's all to do with algorithms or something. What the hell that is? Hey, I'm old. What do I know? All right. Thanks, guys and girls. Get you later. Bye for now.